Tina's Creations. This is episode 131, and this week was exciting. We hit 2,000 subscribers, which to me is so unbelievable. When I started this podcast two and a half years ago, I never imagined that I would have that many people uh, that would subscribe to the channel. So if you are a new subscriber, thank you for stopping by. If you are a return viewer, which a lot of you are, and some of you have been with me like since pretty much the beginning, thank you so much. Um, there's a bunch of you that watch every single week, and you comment, and you send pictures to me over on Facebook, or you send me emails, and I just feel like you guys are my my knitting and crochet friends, you know, my little circle of friends. Uh, so I find that that's fun and exciting because I really don't have that many friends that knit or crochet. So, um, yeah, I feel like you guys are my buddies. Um, I was thinking this week, wouldn't it be fun if we had like a big giant bus and all of us could go on the bus and do like hit yarn shops and go on a yarn crawl together and then sit around with snacks and hot tea and coffee and knit and crochet and chat and show our projects. Although it would probably be kind of bad because if we went into a yarn store, if you're like me, all of us swarming a yarn store, we we could do some damage. We could enable each other, which really probably wouldn't be a good thing, but it would be an awful lot of fun trying. So uh, yeah, anyway, this past week has been really busy. Uh, there's been a lot of videos in case you've missed them. We had... Um, Yesterday was a Lion Brand haul where I bought a, a I bought a lot of yarn. I've got a box this big stuffed with Lion Brand yarn. And then uh, Thursday, what was Thursday? Thursday was the doily along winner. And Demetra has contacted me, so her package will be going out on Monday. And she won this, which is some hand-spun silk yarn. It's like a lace to fingering weight, and it's 375 yards. So that will be going out to Demetra. So congratulations once again to her, and thank you to everybody who participated in our doily along you guys are so much better than I am with crocheting and knitting and all that kind of stuff with the doilies. Um, some of the work that you guys did, I was in total awe of because it's just so pretty. I don't know if I'll ever get to that point with crochet, but but a girl can dream. Uh, so that was Thursday's podcast. Wednesday, I released my new pattern, which was for my basket wave shawl. And on Monday, I did a video on how to read a knitting chart. So this week has had a lot of videos and there's more to come. This next week is going to be exciting. Um, there's going to be some interesting video. So um, I'll tell you more about that later in the podcast. Uh, but I did want to let you guys know that if you put any comments in this video or in the Lion Brand video on Friday, Give me a couple days to respond to them because we're going to go visit my granddaughter and grandsons and my son and daughter-in-law. Uh, and where they live, there's no internet access. So I won't be able to respond to your comments until I get back home. So uh, we are going out to Ohio. We live in Pennsylvania. We're going out there to see my granddaughter in her first ballet recital. And I'm bringing the little ballerina doll that I crocheted. I like her little shoes. Um, anyway, there she is. Her eyeballs still are a little wonky looking, but they look better than they did. So uh, there she is. And so this is going to go with us out to Ohio to give to her to commemorate her first ballet recital. So starting with my finished objects, if you saw the doily along, you saw the picture in the thumbnail. That was my doily right here. I finished my fract. This is my second fractal. My first one was the white one. And then I made this one in a half scale version. So there it is. Let's see if I can get it to hold up. There we go. So there it is. And like I said, this is a half scale version. 
of the full-sized uh, fractal doily. So that was my finished project. Now you might wonder, what is my next crochet project? I have some yarn that I, I showed a few weeks back. Um, this is the yarn. I, it's a different colorway than this. The one I'm going to be using first is blue and yellow. Apparently I like blue and yellow. Actually I do. My house is done in blue and yellow. Um, but it's this yarn, which is Katia Berry, B-A-R-I. And I'm going to, I have two balls of this, um, one in this color and one in the other color. I'm going to be crocheting some little slippers because this is a cotton, I think. Yes, it's 100% cotton. It's a 50 gram ball and there's 120 yards in it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to make some little, little slippers for summer out of it. I thought this would be nice and cool and comfy. So um, that's my plan for my next crochet project. Now for my works in progress. First off, I wanted to show you the modifications I made to my sweater. Last week I had finished my flax light sweater, but I found that it was just a little too loose on the neck. I like things up around here or just like around here. I don't want things my bra straps are going to show on. So I finished the top off a little bit by putting, let's see if I can hold this close. I did a couple rows of double crochet. Well, here's the here's where the ribbing ended, where the original was. So I added about an inch all the way around. So there's a row of double crochet and a row of single crochet. And I kind of did decrease decreases on the single crochet to pull it in a little tighter. And then I did a shell stitch on top of that. So let me put it on and model it for you, and I will show you where it falls now. So here it is now. Now I am trying it on over the shirt I was wearing, but you can see it's much, much snugger here. It's I feel a lot more comfortable with it. So thank you to all of you who sent me in some suggestions. I did hear some people had suggested that I put an elastic thread through this, um, and that was a thought. It was going to be um, either an elastic thread or like a drawstring that I could tie with a bow. But just by doing this little bit, this inch all the way around, made all the difference in the world. So it now it's right on the edge of my of the edge of my collarbone right here on both sides. So it should be perfectly fine. I also redid the hem a little bit. It doesn't look any different, but it was apparently when I cast off, I cast off a little tight. So it was just a little, it just was a little snug at the bottom. So I actually tore the cast off off and I just recast it off, but I used a bigger size needle to do it with. Uh, so that way it automatically was a little bit looser. So yeah, so I'm real happy with how this turned out and it's very wearable now. So that will be, it's too warm to wear it right now. So it will be ready for next fall. My next work in progress is my cozy memory blanket. And I only got two squares added this week. I got this purple one added. This was some leftover yarn from a shawl I made uh, called On the Spice Market. That's like a pink and a grayish purple. So there's that. And then this is leftovers from the sweater that I just put on and modeled for you. So I wanted to have this as a cozy memory. So I made a square out of that. And the rest of that ball of yarn is going to go into my uh, yarn advent calendar that I will be sharing with Karen uh, of SSK Yarners later on this year. So that was my other work in progress. And then another, the last work in progress that I have going on is I'm starting a summer sweater and I showed it to you last week. I am using, well, I've, I've kind of destroyed the ball of yarn when I, I took apart the sweater that was done in this color last week and it had the beads around the, the edging um, and it was very lacy. I changed it around a little bit because I could not find that pattern. I don't know what happened to it. Can't find the pattern to try to go back and I don't remember the name of it. Um, so I'm changing it up a little bit and I'm making kind of a more solid sweater. And this is the bottom. This is from the bottom up. And some people call this fans and feathers or feathers and fans stitch. 
This one technically is called Old Shale. It looks almost identical. About the only difference between the two patterns is the number of stitches. Uh, for Old Shale, it is always traditionally 18 stitches. So that's the one I'm doing, but it looks just like fans and feathers. You, if you looked at the two without counting, you'd never know the difference. Um, but it causes a ripple, and this is where it gets the fans and the feathers because it kind of looks like it fans out here, and it kind of looks feathered here. So it causes a like a wavy bottom. So I'm going to do this for a little bit a little bit further up and then I'm just going to go into a stockinette stitch from there and then I'm going to be putting the beads in like around the collar with it. So um, this is how far I've gotten which is not too far but I just cast this on about two days ago. And I am alternating between the Lana Garosa, which is this and a solid bamboo in this turquoise. So this is slightly darker than this is, but not by much. They go together very well. So that is the project. This is the project I'm going to be working on while we're traveling out to Ohio. It's a seven hour car trip and I will be, I'll be driving for about half of it. So three and a half hours sitting in the car before I take over. So I will be um, doing a little bit of knitting. I can't crochet in the car yet. I get car sick because I have to look down so much where knitting, I don't have to look down as much because I'm much more experienced as a knitter. So um, yeah, that's the project I'm taking along with me. So now that I've shown you what I'm doing, let's take a look at what you all are making. ago I did What Am I Reading and I have finished that book and it was really really a cute series. Um, it's only the second book by this by that particular author. Um, so now I'm I ran out of knitting books or knitting mysteries to read. So whenever I run out of all of all of the knitting and crochet series that I follow, for those of you who are new viewers, I work at a library and I I have a whole bunch of series of mystery, what they call cozy mysteries, which means they're sort of along the lines of Murder, She Wrote. In fact, that's one of the series that I read is Murder, She Wrote. Um, they're a murder mystery without all the blood, guts, and gore. So they're kind of a, a cleaned up murder mystery, if that's possible. Um, like I said, think Murder, She Wrote, and that's would be a cozy mystery. So there are quite a few series out there that are based on knit or crochet. Um, mostly knit, but there is a really cute crochet one out there. Um, so whenever I finish going through all of the series that I'm regularly reading, I have one that I go back and fall back on because there's like 30 some books in the series. So there's always one to read and it's called the Donut Shop Mysteries. They're by Jessica Beck. And this one I think is probably number seven or eight in the series. It's called Powdered Peril. And the, the main character in the book owns a donut shop. How can you go wrong with the donut mystery? Because every chapter has a recipe for donuts of some sort in it. So um, yeah, I could gain weight just reading the book. But anyway, I have not made the recipes, I have to say that. But it's really, it's a cute series. 
And again, that is by Jessica Beck. And you can see I'm almost halfway through it. In fact, I, it looks like I'm almost exactly halfway through it. And um, yeah, it's a cute series. Like I said, the main character lives with her mother and she owns a donut shop and her best friend lives down the street. And the mayor is is a cohort of hers. He's an ex-cop. And so the three of them together get into all kinds of trouble solving mysteries around their little town in North Carolina. So anyway, that is Powdered Peril by Jessica Beck. That's, like I said, my fallback series. That's what I read when I run out of all my other stuff to read. So acquisitions this week, um, I'm not going to show because you just saw that yesterday. But um, yeah, huge. I'm looking over it. My, my grandson was over today for music lessons and he carried the box of yarn upstairs. Um, I asked him, I said, it's not that it's heavy, but it's really awkward. So can you take it upstairs to my craft cave? And he was like, sure, Grandma. So up he just bounced up the stairs like it was nothing. Um, but yeah, the box is literally probably two feet by two feet and about a foot and a half. Yeah, about a foot and a half tall. Full of yarny goodness. Yes. Um, as you saw the title, Yarn Piggery, because Katrina went whole hog at Lion Brand. So I did not buy anything else this week. I've been good. So this is going to be a short episode. We are now to our... And in our Come and Get It section this week, Annie's is offering $2 off any pattern download right now. So it's it's not on their book, uh, the book patterns. It's on their downloaded patterns. Uh, so they are offering $2 off any pattern download right now. They also have a lot of knit and crochet books in the clearance section. I mean, I'm not going to name all of them off because a lot of it depends on what you're into. But I went over and checked it out and they've got a bunch of different, you know, like different baby knits, sock knits, afghans, uh, crochet patterns, dishcloth pattern. They got a whole bunch of stuff. And anyway, over, just check the clearance section over at Annie's. And they have other stuff over there, too. They do carry a little bit of yarn, but mostly it's patterns. So uh, it's worth checking out. Blueprint, which is the old craft seat. If you go to that site, it can be a little tricky to get to the shopping area. I played around with it today and wrote down how I got there so I could pass it on to you. If you go to the Blueprint site and the link is right down below the links to all of these sales are right down below uh, but if you go to the blueprint site again click down below then click on topic you'll see some items up along the top um, like the bar up at the top of the the site you'll see one that says topic click on topic and then click on either knit crochet or yarn that's how you get to where the shopping areas are on there um, but anyway, they have um, Burnett Satin Yarn. I just clicked on their yarn because I'm not looking for any patterns right now. Uh, they have Burnett Satin for $2.09, and they have Sprightly Bulky for $3.15. Um, those are some of the cheaper yarns that they've got. They have other things over in their yarn section. I just picked a couple of the cheapest ones to share with you. So that would be Blueprint. Consumer crafts, um, they don't carry as much as far as yarn, um, they carry a little bit, but really not a whole lot. Um, and as far as knitting tools it's and crochet things, it's very, very basic. But they do carry a lot of things as far as if you are into planners and journals, they carry that. Um, but they also have a rolling tiered cart, which is similar to the one that Ikea sells. And I bought one a while back. I use it constantly. I actually sit my laptop on top of it and I stack them all my craft projects, my knitting and crocheting and all that stuff goes on the other three shelves. And I can kind of roll it around wherever I need it to be. So I'm finding it very helpful. And it comes in a whole bunch of different colors and they are advertising it right now for $29.97. So that is Consumer Crafts. Create for Less, um, again, they don't have a whole lot in the yarn department. They're more of a paper craft uh, type of thing for your scrapbooking and things. But they do carry a little bit of yarn, and they, they carry a lot of Lily Sugar and Cream, which is the cotton yarn that you use for dishcloths. Um, 
you name the color, they've got it. I think they have 120 different colors available over there. So if there's something specific you're looking for that you can't find in your big box store, they probably have it. Um, and it's for $2.59 a skein. And then they also have It's a Wrap. Uh, I believe that's Lion Brand. Um, it's either Lion Brand or Red Heart. It's one of the two. Um, they have it from between $8.59 and $11.99, depending on the yardage, because one is a thicker yarn, so it's less yardage. One is, I believe, a lace or fingering weight, so it's, like, I think close to a 1,000 yards. So um, that's over at Create for Less. Hobium Yarn, their star of the month uh, this month is Yarn Art Jeans Plus, which is a yarn. Uh, and if you buy one skein, you can get it for $2.70. If you buy it in a lot of five, you can get it for $2.43 per skein. They also have Gazzle Cotton. It's a baby cotton, and it is on sale for $1.28 a skein. If you buy it in, a, in lots of 10, you get it for $1.15 per skein. Knit Crate, as always, offers you 20% off of your first subscription box. Uh, you do need to use the coupon code KCREATIONS20 in order to get that discount. Um, and it's in the promotion code. You want to make sure you put KCREATIONS20 all in caps. I'll put it down. I'll put it down here or up here somewhere. Um, they'll show you what it's supposed to look like. Knit Picks. Um, if you sign up to receive their emails, they will send you a coupon code, which will give you free shipping off of your first order. They also have uh, their 20% off yarn of the month is their Swish yarns. So they have all different weights, um, different colors, uh, but Swish is a brand that they carry. And so that is the brand that is 20% off this month. Also over in their clearance section, they have 60% uh, off of tools and books, and site-wide, they have 40% off of their books right now. So that's a good one to check out. Uh, Knit Picks tends to run some really good sales. Leisure Arts, which is known, they do carry yarn, but they're known mostly for their instruction books. Uh, they are offering free shipping on orders over $35. And there is a bunch of new pattern books for knit and crochet over there. Again, just like Annie's, I'm not going to try to tell you all the ones that are over there. But they do have a group of new things that are new arrivals to them. And so they are on sale over there. So that is Leisure Arts. And last, we have Lion Brand. And Lion Brand is offering right now 20% off 12 cotton kits. Uh, they're different kits which means it comes with the pattern and the yarn and there's 12 different ones they are a mix of knit and crochet um, and they're 20 percent off right now they also are offering their baby soft yarn in a package of three for 13 dollars so those are the sales this week and now to fill you in a little bit about upcoming what the upcoming videos are going to be this next following week um, Next Saturday, you will see some footage from when we go out to visit. Hopefully, I will get some pictures of my little ballerina and um, some of her recital. So we will have that to look at, and I'll try to get some pictures of some interesting sites along the way. I did that the last time I went out in the fall. Um, you guys got to see Cabela's, which is a huge hunting and sports type of place, but it's kind of cool because they have a giant aquarium you can walk through and all kinds of stuffed animals that you can see in like different habitats that they live in. It's kind of fascinating. I'm not into hunting and fishing. Neither is my husband, but it's a fun place to walk around and the bathrooms are clean, which is the most important thing. Uh, so anyway, we are going to be stopping there. So I'll try to get some footage to insert in next Saturday's video to show you a little bit about our trip. But on Tuesday, I am actually going to sit down and have a cup of tea or coffee with, um, I drink tea, but I don't know if Kim drinks coffee or tea. Uh, but come to find out, she is she and I have a mutual friend. A lady I work with is a friend of hers. 
and she watches the podcast and we come to find out we live on opposite ends of town. She lives on the other side of Gettysburg from the end that I live on. So we are going to meet in the middle and there's a coffee shop. And so we're going to stop at the coffee shop and have a little knitting session. And she's going to film a little mini podcast with me. And it turns out that there is a knit night being held over at this coffee house or a knit afternoon. I'm not sure. I think it's a knit afternoon. I will let you know. I will find that, that out. Uh, but anyway, it's on two. I think it's on Tuesdays. I could be totally wrong there too. Anyway, I'm not sure. Put it this way. They meet at some point during the week and they have coffee and tea and a bunch of them sit around and knit. And it turns out that the owner of the coffee house also gives, I guess, knitting lessons. I don't know if she crochets as well, but she gives lessons. And so she's, she might be sitting down and enjoying those too. I don't know. Um, so it should be kind of fun. So I'm going to film a little mini podcast and that's what you guys are going to see on Wednesday is our little visit uh, with Kim and I and possibly the coffee shop owner. So um, that'll be fun. So that is going to be Wednesday's video. So that's it for this week. Thank you all once again for watching and for joining me each week and for subscribing. Thanks again, 2,000 subscribers. I'm just excited. Uh, yeah, it's been so much fun. And I will see you again on Wednesday. Thanks for stopping by. If you haven't already clicked the red subscribe button, please do and join our little crafty bunch. So um, have a great week and I'll see you later.